four years has come already. It's election time again. The president is campaigning. You are campaigning. Everybody's campaigning. You are asking Ghanaians to give Akufado another four years. What are the most important reasons why you think Nana Akufado should be given another four years? Uh, Paul, when you are a government in power seeking for re-election, there are three key considerations that will drive the judgment and the decisions of voters. Number one, what did you promise you would do if power was given to you? Number two, what have you been able to achieve in respect of the promises you made at the end of your term in office? Number three, based on what you have achieved, is Ghana better off or is Ghana worse off? These are the three key questions that you as an incumbent government is required. The dynamics are different. If you are in opposition, it's different dynamics. But if you are a government in power seeking re-election, these are the three important considerations. So when we as a party talk about four more years for Nana to do more, fundamentally it's based on these three questions. What did we promise we would do? And what have we done since we came to us? Let me start uh, with, with the first two questions. And just for purposes of traction our discussion, let me look at seven thematic areas. Number one, governance. Number two, the economy. Number three, agriculture. Number four, trade and uh, industry. Five, infrastructure. Six, we can look at education. And seven, we can look at health. It's there interesting may, you don't there, put there education first. Many more. It's interesting you don't put education first. Yes. But I'm, I'm happy to hear yeah, how you see, education but, is sick. But you mm -hmm. see, this must be put in context. Mm -hmm. Governance is the foundation of development. And that's why I would put, in terms of accounting for what you've done, that's how I would put it. Because governance then means what? So, so in my own humble opinion, mm -hmm. When I talk about accounting for what we've done in governance, it has three components. It has many more mm -hmm. because of our time limitation. Mm -hmm. Number one, we promised to deepen decentralization and to bring government to the doorsteps of the average Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Number two, we promised to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. And well, number three, we also promised that we'll maintain peace, security, and order in this country. Mm -hmm. So let me start with deepening decentralization. Three key outcomes so far. Number one, within three and a half years, we've been able to establish six new regions. Mm -hmm. And remember, to establish a region, a new region, or number of regions. You have to go through a referendum. So just try and understand the process it takes just to be able to develop the regulatory and policy framework to create a region and then go into a referendum. So within three years, we were able to go through that exercise and we have six new regions. But it goes beyond that. We've also been able to create 44 new districts. So when we talk about bringing government to the doorsteps of the people, it's about creating new regions that will bring government closer to them. It's about creating new districts. We've created 44 new districts. And we've also elevated 32 districts into municipalities. So if we talk about deepening De decentralization, there's clear evidence that within a very short time, all this has occurred. But let's go to the second one, the fight against corruption. Uh, let's stay on the first okay. one for a very while. Well. Okay. Well, how does that bring food to anywhere? You've created six more regions, so you have Oti region, you have Western North, you have Savannah, yeah. and you have Northeast. Okay, so, but, but, so, but, but, so, but Paul, so, so let's try and stay on course as to the logic behind what I'm saying. Yeah, I get that. I, I'm saying that 
Number one, we promised to deepen our governance. And, and that has been achieved by these uh, things. By, by these things. So okay. we don't even need to escalate the conversation uh, to uh, does that put food on the store? Because okay. we, we are can talking come to now that. about accounting for what the you things promise you promised you do. to do. Because that's the only basis you can ask for more, uh, more, more, more time. Yes. More years. But in terms of bringing government yeah. closer to the people, we have created new regions and yeah. giving people their own governance platform yes, within yes. their locality. Yes. So from there, they can turn out what they want. Absolutely. And they can it get... It all leads on to what you are asking about. Okay, but, to but getting that's... them closer to the national cake. Yes, yes, okay. so that's, that's governance. Okay, fair enough. The fight against corruption. corruption. We've always maintained that to sustain any effort at fighting corruption, you have to create institutions that are designed to deal with corruption. So number one, we created the Office of the Special Prosecutor, an independent body that is in t established to investigate and prosecute uh, cases or incidents of corruption. Number two, we've worked very hard uh, to have the Right to Information uh, uh, Act. Mm -hmm you know, uh, in place. Yes, and after also, many, many years. Uh, so after many, many years. And so there's also the Right to Information Commission that is complementing the, the act. Now, we have to understand that you cannot depend on people's own judgment to deal with corruption. The institutions must create the ecosystem for people to work, you know, to deal with, with, with corruption. So those are two very important uh, developments. But thirdly, also, we have introduced an online uh, uh, web, interactive web, web, uh, website that allows people now to file cases on, uh, in respect of Whistleblowers Act. Mm -hmm. You know, we enacted the Whistleblower Act in 2006. Mm -hmm. But just the act does not help with dealing with corruption. But this interactive uh, website now allows uh, individuals uh, public, the opportunity for public reporting of incidents of it. So if you take the fight, and I could go on and Let on. me come back to the special prosecutor, because you talked yes. about uh, the Whistleblowers Act, that just enacting it is not enough. Yes. There are yeah. perceptions yeah. that the public prosecutor's office is uh, it's not working. It doesn't, it doesn't have teeth. It has not achieved anything yeah. so far. It has not arrested government ministers yeah. to show that it is dealing with the yeah. people in power. Yeah. And it has not really achieved anything yeah. since Martin Amidu, yeah. which was a big choice, yeah. uh, became. So special prosecutor's office, yeah. as an indication of the government's yeah. commitment in the fight against corruption, yeah. may be standing on one leg. Yeah, yeah but Paul, um, I'm not sure we have enough time. This is your... This is a perception uh, of some people. Yeah, so perceptions of some people. Mm -hmm. So we have to interrogate that perception. And we don't want to use uh, this precious time, you know... But why are you confident? As the, a senior the, the, the minister point, of the government, you're a senior minister of the, the government. Point, the point why are you that, confident about special prosecutors' yeah, so role? The point, the, uh, uh, Paul, the point that I'm making is that we are counting for results. Yes. We are talking about making a promise to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. We are saying that one of the building blocks in terms of institutional structures to fight corruption, not only in Ghana, globally, is to create an office for special prosecutor, an independent office. Mm -hmm. So that is a major first step. If we want now to interrogate whether it is functioning properly or not. That's a different matter. OK, at least the opportunity but, but, is there yeah, so, so, for people so, to complain to somebody. Yeah, but, but the point also is that we made a promise and we fulfilled it. Mm -hmm. OK, but that's, I get that's that. So we are, we are still that, on governance. Uh, yes, we are okay. still on governance. The third one is maintaining peace, security, and order. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the Dagmon crisis for many years had been one of the most intractable I would say, a, a crisis in our country, which had the potential of being extended to other communities. Now, let's look back 
on how, as a country, we've struggled with dealing with uh, uh, this type of crisis. It took a president two years working with the eminent chiefs to for the uh, uh, Nairi and then um, Yagbonra. Now, these eminent chiefs working together with the president and his team within two years have been able to turn Dagbon around to the extent that now Dagbon is at peace. How can you ignore that when you are talking about accounting for results in, in governance? For me, I think that, uh, that number two, if you look at our sub-region, the ECOWAS region, you know what is going on around us in the Sahelian countries. For us to have been able to re-equip our security forces, armed forces, the immigration, the police, even the fire service, not only for the purposes of fighting crime, but also dealing with external threats within a region that um, has the potential for destabilization. This could not happen by chance. And that, I think, is a record that we are uh, uh, proud of. Mm -hmm. But we are also proud of the fact that for once in our country, we now have a national identification system that has been established. Because all the challenges with you know, crime and not being able to track people who are doing different things, it's all because we don't have a unique mm. identification system. So, and I said, if we had time, I could go on. So just in the area of governance, I've given you three things. Mm -hmm. Deepening decentralization, the fight against corruption, maintaining peace, law, uh, peace order, and then security. And I've given you subsets of each of them, mm -hmm. which gives you a sense of how we account for the I think that the Yana thing is very convincing. There's no doubt yes. about that. That's, that's particularly convincing yeah. in terms of peace and security. Yeah. But somebody will... But, but which one is not convincing? Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the most convincing. <laughs> somebody will chuckle that, well, uh, I mean, Alan Chamatin can say all he wants. Is it not the same people who created the Yana conflict? It is them. They created it. So if they are solving it, why should we clap for them? Somebody yeah. will just... You an know, opposition know, member will just chuckle and say that, oh, don't, don't, don't uh, worry uh, about uh, it. As I said... Um, we want to use this mm -hmm. precious time uh, to, to, deal to, with. To, to deal with facts. Okay, so you the know, point you're making yeah. is that promises made. We said we'll do this. Yes. And your analysis and your uh, um, evidence is that we have done it. Yes. Okay, that's governance. Yes. Okay. I'm sure the viewers will, will score you how they will score you. <laughs>